while preparing for the MicroHams Digital Radio Networking Conference, I got to rummaging around through old software uh, concerning uh, radio networks, and in particular this simulator that I made in 1977. Here's a, a document I wrote for my uh, radio colleagues uh, explaining how we could use a computer of the era, which would be an 8-bit home computer, and a transceiver, which I'd imagined a uh, ham radio, a VHF unit, but this was also an era CB where CB radio was all the craze, and the, the people did not make good CB radio operators, and I thought it wouldn't be hard to get a computer to uh, outperform the uh, average CB radio operator. I wrote this simulator and demonstrated that it was possible to uh, route traffic all over the United States. Of course, this was all before cell phones, so it anticipated that. This is a, uh, a, a version that I wrote. I, I wrote it in Pascal originally and translated it to Java, and that allowed me to put some Java graphics on it in 2002, and this actually gave me the first view into what the simulator was actually doing uh, other than uh, charts and graphs. So this is what I'd hoped to show and uh, dredged it up and the Java still worked and in fact the graphics has improved uh, over the years. And so that's what I'd like to show you now. Here's how I run the program. It's uh, called SimView. So I'll compile and run that. It uh, complains a little bit but uh, seems to work okay. And this is uh, what the simulator looks like. I have a capability of tracing how traffic will be routed, but let's just watch it uh, run for a while. This, uh, as it simulates, if a uh, radio channel is in use, and the channels are marked by the lines between the cities, the red dots, if the channel is in use on any given point, it makes it bold, and so you can see the traffic kind of drifting across the country in both directions. Sometimes there'll be congestion at a particular city, a particular node, or a particular radio station. So I show that by a circle that gets larger and larger as there's more traffic backed up. I created this map by just taking a printed map and selecting every city that was large enough to have a dot and a circle on the uh, printed map. Out west, I picked a few mountaintops, too, just to uh, complete the connectivity over ranges that I thought would be possible with a VHF radio. Uh, of course, in the uh, Midwest and the East there, there's a jumble of cities, and that makes for a difficult radio transmission area because there's a lot of interference between adjacent stations. So we can see the slower throughput, the uh, increased traffic, and a, a backlog building up there in uh, Indiana, Ohio. Let's try adjusting this uh, simulator a little bit. I do have in my controls here some feature switches. Here I was uh, generating load based on the population, so any given individual is just as likely to send a message to any other individual, which means big cities tend to send more traffic between big cities. What I'm going to do is I'm going to say, while you run, try to adjust the route that you send the traffic based on where the congestion is. So what we saw around the Great Lakes, we might avoid. Uh, I'll say uh, dynamic routing is true. And we'll just run a new version of the simulator. Now again, traffic starts happening, but this time you see there's a little red halos around cities while they're adjusting their routing tables. And that kind of moves in waves across the country as traffic builds up. And uh, routing decisions are revised to uh, take advantage of the less used stations. We can kind of watch this happen if we say, how, how would you route traffic maybe up here from Fargo, North Dakota, down to Miami, Florida, and we can see the routes changing. The blue is the outbound route, and the green is a return path, just as uh, traffic builds up in various places that's bouncing around. Down here in the corner, we can see the estimate of how long it would take at any given step, so as it's getting closer, it estimates that it's going to take less time 
we can see that jump occasionally as it's making decisions sometimes it gets a little uh, inconsistent uh, the routes will point itself in a circle that condition doesn't last too long and it's possible that a message could go around in a circle a few times but it will find itself on its way soon enough this is a little more challenging here we can see the the load in the uh, Indiana, Ohio, Michigan area is now spread across even more stations and this might make a couple of paths through there but it also probably increases the uh, contention for the, ra the single radio channel that this model uses. We do see that a, a routes out of the northeast can go south as well as north. We have to go way up around here before it will start routing through that congestion. Look, even then it, it, it tends to go south to avoid that, that backlog. You know, I live in Portland, so I wonder how does it go down the coast? No problem. As soon as I start getting into the southwest, it is likely to take either the coastal route or through the, uh, through the west, again avoiding this big hollow spot in uh, Utah and Nevada. I, I was careful when I made this simulation to make sure that, that I did have a variety of different circumstances. And so what I would expect is radio operators would uh, strive to uh, improve the linkages and avoid congestions where they discover congestion occurs. That was something I experimented with by actually hypothesizing a transcontinental link which I ran from San Francisco to New York. Uh, amateur radio operators have a variety of frequencies to choose from and so I just imagined that they would use some frequency that would skip off the ionosphere for example and allow them to connect. There's this additional line when the load starts building up we can pick something and, and, and see when it starts using that line. You'll notice that there, it flashes black and then pretty quickly it picks up that, that, that that's a pretty good way to get east to west and so it's uh, pretty much on all the time. Let's experiment as we try to route something further east. Eventually it will decide, oh go ahead and, 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 and use the link. Oh, here we're going from Cleveland. It goes east to New York City and then west to uh, San Francisco and finally to Eureka, California. That creates another hot spot here in New York City and, and so the load starts building up for that transcontinental link. Eventually it, it will say, well, no, I'll take the, uh, the long route across the, uh, the, the Midwest and the West rather than taking the link. So there's uh, a lot going on here. This is a uh, a, a nice way to play because I can modify the, uh, the simulator, but simulating this many radio stations all working at once creates a, a pretty dynamic environment and I spend a lot of time just exploring how this, this routing actually works and what it does, where the thresholds are, and so forth. It turns out it's a pretty, uh, a pretty interesting way to explore a computer program that has presented mysteries to me for uh, 35 years.